So we're here today on a Saturday, which normally we don't do, but we have a carbon fiber that we've got to build. Um, this is our what we consider our carbon fiber clean room, um, where the shaft we're building, um, give you a little background, so Melissa, aka Mel, and I went to save some racers from Michigan with a Challenger Demon who broke a drive shaft. We took a drive shaft out to them, we got them going. Um, we enjoyed it so much, we decided to take the guys down to Bradenton the following day, um, day two or day three of Sick Week, and we ran into uh, Steve Morris from, Steve Morris has Steve Morris Engines up in Michigan. Um, he had a drive shaft issue. Um, we approached him, he had the problem fixed. Um, we told him, if you need anything, we're up in Tampa. Um, since you're down here in Florida, let us know. Um, so fast forward, we all went to Texas 2K. Uh, while at Texas 2K, I ran into Steve Morris again. And Steve was in the process of upgrading his wagon. Steve, Steve not only has an engine build shop, but he also races a Chevy station wagon uh, with about 5,000 horsepower. Um, but the car has to be upgraded in order to utilize that power. So when we were talking, he said, you know, I've got a new differential coming from a car. I do not have a drive shaft. Uh, would you be interested? Of course, I'm not going to say no. So Steve contacted us uh, about a week ago and gave us some measurements. Uh, we started discussing series of the drive shaft. Um, if, typically, we build most cars 1350 series. This here is like a 1353 and a half tube. So just to give you an idea, look at the difference from 1350 to 1480. These things are big mamba jambas. <laughs> Unfortunately, Steve broke two of those during sick week. So I said, okay, well, I guess you need my big ass, bad ass. 1480 series pro mod shaft. He said, yep, that's, that's what we need. So today we're going to go through a 1480 series four inch carbon fiber build from start to finish. Um, our shafts, all of our carbon fiber shafts are assembled by, again, Melissa, AKA Mel. She's right over here. Hi guys. Um, so we're going to get started on the build and follow it, follow us through. Okay guys, so uh, just going to run through the quick process of how we actually uh, measure for the carbon fiber drive shaft, how we know where to cut the tube at and stuff like that. So the first steps for me is I, I get the, the measurement from the customer and then um, we have to take measurements of every single thing and subtract that from the measurement the customer gave us, which gives us the measurement of the tube and how long I need to cut it at. So uh, let's get started. This is just to make sure they're both the same size. So now we have our measurement. I always put my mark um, right behind my measurement, honestly, because the blade to the saw is so thick um, that I don't, I don't want to lose measurement. I don't want to lose material from the blade. So I always put the mark just past my measurement. That way I know when I, the blade cuts, I will be uh, right, on, right on mark for the uh, exact measurement. So now we're gonna go back to the saw and cut this apart and do the next steps. All right, so we're ready to, ready to make our cut. Um, our, our saw here is um, quite the wicked saw, so uh, Mel prefers that I do this. <laughs> she will assist, make sure the tube stays straight, um, but we're gonna make our cut. Here we go, guys. Fine. 
fun part. All the fingers are still there though. <laughs> but next, we will scuff the inside of the tube, take it out, clean the inner diameter, the outer diameter with some water, get rid of this, all of this carbon fiber dust that gets to uh, inside and outside the tube. And then we'll go back into the clean room and start the actual assembly process. high-tech wash station, but it works. One of the big keys to the carbon fiber, probably 95% of this build is about being clean. Everything has to be perfectly clean uh, for these adhesives to, to make that bond to be able to hold uh, the power that guys are making out of these cars. One of the reasons Mel won't let any of the rest of us do it. <laughs> we don't clean well enough. <laughs> okay, so now we're back in the main clean room. Um, as Shane mentioned earlier, one of the most important parts or steps to the assembly of the carbon fiber drive shaft is cleanliness. This, this has to be so clean. Uh, if there's any sort of, of dust or dirt or any remnants in here, the bond will not adhere properly, which is the main cause for spun bonds. Um, but anyway, so we're going to start with the scuffing of these. And then cleaning these, I clean the inside of the tube with some acetone and then we'll heat it up and then we'll start the assembly process. I'm just running a steel uh, sort of pipe cleaner, I guess, through the port injection holes trying to remove any sort of uh, burrs or anything that might be left over from the machining of the injection port. Um, Want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to get injected into the tube <laughs> while I uh, inject the bond or the inject the adhesive. Pour, I get the injection ports cleared out of any sort of burrs or anything like that and then I'm going to run the uh, acetone through it just to try and get rid of any sort of dust or dirt or anything that might be left over because as you see, there was some in there. And uh, if I was to just go ahead and inject the adhesive, all of this dirt would end up in the glue and would compromise the bond. So we rinse that out, make sure it's uh, clean and then we start the cleaning process of the bonds. To remove any sort of dust or material that could have been left over from when we scuffed it, which there's a lot. So we have to clean these over and over and over until the rag is actually spotless uh, to make sure that we're going to have a good bond. All right, one more wipe down and we'll move on to the tubing. We are good. So then the next step is to flash it. Um, of course, you want to make sure all of the Acetone has evaporated before you do such, so we're going to remove all of the acetone from the table and then we will uh, start the flash process. I think it's cool watching this stuff. So, in case if anybody's wondering, the main reason why we actually heat the bond yoke and the inside of the tube is because we're flashing off the release agent, uh, any sort of moisture that may be being held inside that aluminum. 
we're getting rid of all of that so that we can also ensure a proper bond adhesion, so. Not only are these what they refer to as bond yokes, bonded in with adhesive, but we actually press these in with, as you can see, a 12 ton press before the adhesive is even injected in there. This is a new design and it's a fantastic design. Voila. And every time we do that, we always have to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> And now, just like washing hair, we rinse and repeat. No, we just, we just repeat the steps that we previously did. So now, everything's pressed together. As you can see, we inject the adhesive through a port on the bottom of the yoke, which in return forces all the air to the top. And when we see the glue come out the top, we continue to purge until we don't see any air bubbles coming out. We know that we've got a complete bond then. And she did it, 40 and a half, right on the money. All right, there we go, Steve. She's assembled. Um, we'll let it cure over the weekend. Um, these have a 48 hour um, curing time. So we'll come in Monday. Um, we'll put some U-joints in this thing. It's gonna get put in my Torquinator. <laughs> we're gonna find out if Mel has built a good shaft. Um, afterwards, it'll get balanced. Um, hopefully, we'll have this thing shipped out Monday or Tuesday to you, Steve. Thanks. Tomorrow. Tomorrow for sure. Eventually. Uh. All right, so here we are Monday. We're back on Steve's drive shaft for the wagon. Uh, we're getting ready to do a U-joint install uh, using the Dake Arbor Press. Uh, no beating on U-joints here. Not gonna happen. <laughs> um, I did wanna show, um, I didn't show earlier in the video, um, all the U-joints go into these performance shafts are the new Neapco performance U-joints, specifically designed for performance racing applications. Um, the other U-joints, great great U-joints from a lot of the other manufacturers, but these are the newest on the market, strongest on the market, um, so that's all we use. So. Uh, Jordy's going to be pressing in the U-joints for us. Um, Jordy, you want to get started? Sure. Make it happen, man. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And why do we use the Arbor Press? Why do we use the Arbor Press? So we don't destroy yokes with hammers, right? Mm -hmm. We don't destroy yokes and we also have a less chance of dropping needles, um, which means we only have to do this one time instead of numerous times. <laughs> As if you could tell, it actually has a little cushion inside of there. So if we actually drop needles on it, it will actually embed itself into that, that little orange seal there and uh, it'll actually create like a rocky feel in the universal as well. So that's another reason why we want to make sure we don't drop these U-joints because with the performance line, they are way tired of a tolerance. Um, of course, being needed to be that way uh, for that higher, uh, higher horsepower application. Um, and that way, uh, when you're going at high rates of speed, this U-joint stays exactly where it's supposed to stay. Just like that. She's in. We seat it. Now on to the other side. So now, on to the Torquinator. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. We're gonna twist this thing up, probably, probably go 4,000 foot-pounds in our new torque machine and check the bonds on the yokes. And, uh, All right, we've got her in the machine. Um, everything's bolted up, locked down, ready to go. As you can see here, we've got a degree wheel on the front, 
with a laser on the back so we can actually see how many degrees we twist this drive shaft after we start putting the um, torque to it. Um, so let's get started. And like I said, we're gonna go up to probably close to 4,000 foot-pounds. We are up to 3,400. He broke this. I yeah. just hit myself. <laughs> well, we actually made it. The drive shaft held. We broke our machine at 4,000 foot pounds, but your drive shaft is solid, Steve. So we're going to take this thing out. We're going to go over here to the balancer and we'll get her balanced up and we'll show you that as well. We'll be back soon. So now Shane's just going through the you know, procedures to get the machine set up to balance carbon fiber. Um, it is an electronic uh, style balancer, so it does require, you know, some information so it understands, you know, the weight of the shaft, everything like that, so we can get the effects and everything on it um, and get this thing, you know, balanced uh, for those high, uh, higher RPMs. Basically, the calibration weight is used so that way when we're spinning the machine up, it knows what does this weight do at a certain point, right? So right now he's gonna set it up at zero degrees on what's called the left plane, which is our first sensor on the far left side. He's gonna put that 0.37 on zero degrees. When he spins it up, the machine's gonna notice that 0.37 is out of balance at zero degrees and what that effect does to this drive shaft. And then once we get this calibrated on this side, we're gonna do the same thing on what's called plane two, which is our far right side. If we were running a three-piece drive shaft, there'd be three planes, right? For this instance, for Steve Morris's drive shaft, there's only two planes. Wow, that back, that back went almost in there perfect. So there you go, Steve. She's balanced up. Um, that's like Jordan was saying, that's some really tight tolerances I have set on there. So this thing is definitely a bullet. Um, tomorrow we'll get these weights glued on. Uh, this thing should be in a cardboard tube and on its way to you. And one last thing, like I said in the beginning, Steve's goal is to go 1-0, 60 foot in this car. I believe he said 580, 590s in the quarter. Um, so I'm gonna put my own little personal touch on here. There you go, buddy. Looking forward to see the one O's. Uh, thanks everybody for watching um, and keep your eye out for more videos. Thanks.